Um, what I want to do is I, I want to just talk a little bit about why we wrote this book and some of the issues. And there's two factors that kind of came together that really move this forward. And the first is actually on the first page of the book, and I'd just like to take a moment and read it to you. There was an incident that took place in South Africa and in, um, in June 2001. I had the honor of helping to put together a delegation from the Service Employees International Union to go to visit South Africa and to meet with their counterpart. And uh, let me just read through this. So Johannesburg, South Africa. In a hotel conference room in June, June 2001, a critical dialogue took place between leaders of the U.S.-based Service Employees International Union and the South African National Education, Health, and Allied Workers Union, otherwise known as the Howard. Also in the room were representatives of the Congress of South African Trade Unions, with which with, with which the Howard is affiliated. The discussion, part of a several-day exchange between the two unions examining issues facing their respective movements, focused on political action. After an insightful presentation by Nahawi, a free-flowing exchange unfolded. A young progressive SEIU local union leader from the West Coast, commenting on the role of the union in political action, noted what must have seemed obvious to him, that the role of the union is to represent the interests of its members. The representatives of Nahawi offered a careful and diplomatic reply. Comrades, they began. The role of the union is to represent the interests of the working class. There are times when the interests of the working class conflict with the interests of the members of our respective unions. Silence descended on the room. The SEIU leaders said nothing. Time seemed to have stopped. The discussion proceeded, but no one commented on the statement by the Nahawi leaders. Not then, or not during the rest of the trip. That moment, for me, was one of those things I guess you call a critical image, critical moment, because it represented, here you had uh, probably the most progressive, or at least one of the most progressive unions in the United States at the time, that was interacting with a partner organization in South Africa. Yet there was an ideological divide between them. There was a completely different sense of what the role of unions and unionism really is. So for the Nahawu folks and, and folks out of Kusatu and out of another federation called Naktu, the union is part of a process of social transformation. And, and although many people would look at the South African Union Movement and say, well, you know, they're very radical because of the anti-apartheid struggle, there's truth there. But it's also the case that they have a different vision because they have, they have a different ideological framework. They're looking at the union not simply in terms of wages, hours, and working conditions, and not even in terms of lobbying for changes in government, but that the union needs to be a force in the process of social transformation. And what's unfortunate is that as the grip of neoliberalism has strengthened in South Africa, there's been struggles within the South African Union movement to push it in more of a direction as we have in the United States. The second thing that influenced Fernando and me were, were the, this, uh, the circumstances that led up to the split in the AFL-CIO in 2005. In the period roughly between 2003 and 2005, it was clear that something was percolating. And there was, there was a moment when it appeared that we were on the verge of a phenomenal debate over the future of organized labor, future of the working class. And it vanished. Instead of a debate, what we ended up having was an exchange of spin, of uh, sound bites, of struggle by humiliation. We had very little examination of some of the fundamental issues that really face workers in the United States, workers around the world, and what that means for a union movement. So you had this very bizarre exchange with one side saying, 
that a real movement needs to put more effort into organizing and the other side only wants to do politics, the other side saying, well, no, that's not true. But there was no real examination of what was going on. What do we need? A couple of months before the uh, split, the American Federation of Government Employees and three other unions came up with a proposal. And we have the proposal in here in Appendix A. The proposal was a resolution, and it was a very interesting one, because it was, it called for essentially, first of all, sort of like a ceasefire. That is a pulling back from a split. But it did not call for submerging differences. It proposed an extensive, year-long debate. A debate unlike any that the U.S. labor movement has ever seen. Because it would not be a debate simply among the leaders, but it would be a debate at the level of the Central Labor Council, state federations, and local unions. It would be a debate around some very, very fundamental issues, like what is neoliberal globalization? Um, what, is, what, what impact is the reshaping of technology having on workers? What does it mean in terms of forms of organization? What about the way that the state is evolving, has been evolving for 20 or 30 years? What does that mean for the community? So they were calling for a debate. So it was the American Federation of Government Employees, the Communication Workers of America, the International Federation of Professional and Technical Engineers, and the um, American Postal Workers Union. Excuse me, they came forward with this proposal. They went to the change to win side. And the change to win side responded in two ways, uh, both of which indicated a lack of interest in this. The first was to basically say, well, maybe we'll accept it if John Sweeney steps down as president of the FLCIO. Well, clearly that kind of response was aimed at discovering the whole thing. The other response was actually sort of interesting, and it gives me an opportunity to talk about the historical um, situation. The other response was, it was too late. Now, I, I was trying to understand, what did it mean it was too late? The convention had not happened, the split had not happened, what did it mean that it was too late? And those words, it was too late, reminded me of something that I heard 15 years before. Um, in 1991, the Soviet Union negotiated for Saddam Hussein to withdraw from Kuwait. And uh, Gorbachev, who was then uh, president of the Soviet Union, went to George H.W. Bush and said, look, I, I was able to convince the, the, the Iraqis to withdraw. They will withdraw. They just want to make sure you don't shoot them in the back while they're withdrawing. And George Bush said, it was too late. And at the time, I was saying, how the hell could it be too late? Excuse me. How can it be too late? Right? How can it be too late? The shooting hasn't started yet. So we mean it's too late. And then I had one of those aha moments. Right? It's like, oh, I got it. You want to go to war. So if you want to go to war, of course a peace proposal is too late. Because you want to go to war. The change to win response indicated that they wanted a split. There was no rational reason to reject a proposal like this, and certainly not to say that it was too late, because there was no split at that, at that point. So it was clear at that juncture that, we, that some folks within the change to win wanted a split, and they were determined to have one regardless. In that moment, Fernando and I just felt, along with many other people, this is ridiculous, and we need to talk about What's going on here? What's leading to the split? And why, in our opinion, both sides got it wrong? Um, so the question, the question that we try to grapple with in this book is really this. Can the unions in the United States become vehicles for social transformation? In other words, can they not mirror what the South Africans and others are doing? But that basic theme, can they go beyond the parameters that they have, uh, that they've operated within. And we would say yes, 